Hey everyone, I'm very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So guys, before moving on to anything, let me inform you that we have started the spotlight revision sessions. I hope that you are up to date with the dates and timings of the session and you are attending them regularly. Now let's move ahead in the video and let me inform you, our dear seven Nabards live courses are there. This is the timetable which you can see. And flash course for Nabard is also there. If you want to know more about the course, you can do so on the app as well as on our website okay apart from this uh if you want to connect with us you can use this channel you can use mail id you can use the discussion button which in the dot in forum so all these platforms are here so that we can connect with you we can help you out so if you feel anything that is disturbing your preparation that is disturbing your uh goal so you can connect with us we can guide you so on that note, let's begin with the first question. I hope every one of you have the PDF with you. And if you don't, then guys, the PDF is there on the Telegram channel. Download it, keep it beside you and then learn what I'm teaching you. So let's begin. The first question is, where was the 16th meeting of the National Association of Street Vendors of India organized? Okay, so it was organized in you. Now, your first question is, tell me the head of this association. Now guys, uh, the 16th edition of this uh, meeting was organized, so do remember the name, the number of the edition as well as the theme. <coughs> From encroachers to self-employed. This is the theme of this meeting and theme is also very important. Now during this meeting, a very, I would say, shocking fact was revealed by the Union Minister of Home of, uh, sorry, Arman of uh, Housing and Urban Affairs, okay, uh, Hardeep Singh Puri. He said that this Swanidhi scheme, till now, we all knew that under the Swanidhi, 10,000 rupees are given as the working capital loan to the street vendors. And upon the successful return or repayment of the loan, the amount is increased. But now, the amount of the increment has also been given. For example, if I am a street vendor, I have taken a loan of rupees 10,000, I have repaid the loan to the bank in the due time, then I am eligible for more amount. Okay, I am eligible for uh, taking up a loan of a higher amount and now that amount has been revealed, that is 20,000 and 50,000. Okay, so initially 20,000, if you repay it again on time, then 50,000. So do remember the limits, guys, these are important and prior to this, the limits were not announced. Okay, it was only mentioned that the increment uh, in the loan amount could be done for the people who pay the amount in due time. But now the amounts are also revealed, so do remember these amounts. Furthermore, the progress achieved by the Swanidhi scheme. So as of July 11, 2022, this is really, really recent. Until or unless you have anything coming up regarding the scheme just before your examination, take this data as the final data and remember it, okay? So uh, you can do one thing that you can create one uh, uh, one paper of on your notebook, okay? There you can write such uh, facts which are very, uh, you can say dynamic in nature. They are very volatile to change. Anytime this data can change, anytime uh, whenever there is a new meeting, the ministry can change this data, obviously. So write down this data on a sheet of paper and then what you can do is just before one to two weeks of the examination, see whether a new data is there or not. Uh, whenever a new data comes up, you are going to write it down on the same sheet of paper and the latest data that is there with you, you can start remembering that data just before two weeks of your examination. In this manner, the overlapping of the data remembering would be reduced and at the same time, you will feel less burden. Okay. And again, third benefit is that you have all such data at one place, so it will be easier for you to remember them as well. So, 11 July 2022, 3,651 crore rupees have been provided to 30 like street vendors. Under the phase one of Swamiji Samriddhi, which was launched in January 2021, 31 like street vendors have been enrolled and across the 125 cities. So all the facts that are underlined, they are important. Now what is this? Swamiji Samriddhi? Swamiji Samriddhi is basically the 
campaign that was launched under the Swanidhi scheme to uh, include the street vendors as well as their families into the other central social welfare schemes. Okay, so that was the basic idea. A total of eight social welfare schemes were targeted, and the data uh, uh, of the eligibility was taken from the street vendors and their family members. I hope that this is clear. Now I hope you remember the names of the schemes. These eight schemes are important. Now if you should remember mention them in the comment section. Below. This type is a very important question. You can expect it in your paper. Okay. Where was the human space flight expo organized? So it is basically an exposition it was organized at Jawaharlal and Mukla and it is in Bangalore. Apart from this, there is nothing else. Where is India's first brain health clinic located? So it is located at Jayanagar General Hospital in Bangalore. Uh, okay. And two more such centers are going to come up at the same city. Okay, Kola district uh, and Chikka Balapuda district in uh, Bangalore. Okay, in partnership with National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, which is Nimhans. Again, it is also headquartered in Bangalore. So these are the important information. And Brain Day, World Brain Day was celebrated on July 2022, on the occasion of which this center was uh, established. Tell me the theme of this day. Okay, next question is which has become the first district in India to be certified as Har Ghar Jal? District by the government of India. So, guys, it is the first district as you can see in the question itself. It is Burhan. Now, where is it? Madhya Pradesh. Now, before going into the details, let me also tell you that recently Madhya Pradesh was again in the news because India and Namibia signed an MOU for introducing cheetahs in the Puno National Park, which is again in Madhya Pradesh. Do remember. Now, coming back to the news. So, Burhanpur district in Madhya Pradesh has become the first district of India that has been certified as the Hargar Jal district and the Jal Jeevan Mission. And the basic aim of Jal Jeevan Mission is to bring water, portable water, or you can say tap water, to every rural household by the year 2024. Okay, so this is an important step towards that. Moving ahead. Recently, the Union Home Minister Amit Shah announced to launch an EFIR filing system in Gandhinagar, which will enable citizens to file FIR online without visiting a police station. This step is a part of the eGuj uh, COP project, which then was the project launched. So here, guys, the right answer is 2030. Option A is the right answer. Now, as you can see in the question itself, EFIR portal has been launched and what is the purpose? The purpose is to allow the citizens to file the FIRs online. And we all know what is the purpose of doing digitization. First is to reduce corruption, second is to reduce delays. And also it is very convenient for the uh, consumers as well to use the digital platforms for various government services. So this is one of those services now. Okay, so FIRs will be filed online only. And this is the part of the e COP project, E-Gujarat COP is police, okay, project which was launched in 2013 which aims to integrate the working of the Home Affairs Department of the state with the information technology. It's nothing but digitalization and modernization of the Home Affairs Department and police is the, uh, is under the ages of this uh, department. Moving ahead, which state has received USD 96.3 million from ADB, Asian Development Bank, for safe drinking water and sanitation project. So here the margin of the is the right answer. Again, the states which have received the loans, you need to write it down in your notes. The name of the state, amount, and the word. That's all. And these should be three, three words only, not more than that. Only in three months, one news should be summarized and you should create this thing for you, yourself, okay? Because this will help you in the last minute revision. And in about you have only 20 questions. But these questions, 20 questions are asked from random areas, okay? And also the pattern or the level you can say is also very random because they can directly ask you the amount of the 
and we know that such loans are dispersed or you can say rapidly to many states so this should be your approach to create your own short notes again i am saying short note that means that you need to be concise in your approach don't try to write full sentences it will consume your time as well as make your notes very voluminous then it is of no use coming back to the news so adb has given 96.3 million uh, dollars to himachal pradesh for himachal pradesh rural printing water improvement and livelihood project so very easy to understand from the name itself that is the purpose is to increase the drinking water capacity in the state of himachal pradesh now no specific city has been mentioned here uh, which is a uh, good luck for all of us because now the effort of remembering the city has been reduced here understand this point that this is under jal jeevan mission okay now jal jeevan mission is there in the news for two reasons first is this and second one is the har ghar jal district so what is your responsibility cover this jal jeevan mission thoroughly from the government schemes the document that we have provided you and keep yourself updated with all the recent changes made to the scheme moving ahead which state has launched the family doctor project so here the right answer is andhra pradesh now guys right, andhra pradesh has first of all know this fact it is on a pilot basis this project now family doctor project is basically uh, to allow the doctors from the primary health care sectors in the rural districts in the rural wards so that they can attend to the citizens okay so that is the basic idea apart from this don't go into too much of its detail now understand this point primary health care center what is there so arishman bharat scheme is one scheme that is related to it cover the scheme thoroughly okay and you also have the national digital health mission so that is also your responsibility cover moving ahead with which country has india signed an agreement for mutual recognition of educational degrees of students uh, of bachelor masters doctoral courses so here guys right, uk is the right answer with uk india is also planning to complete its fta in this year we are in the negotiation stage let's see who wins uk's elections that is also there okay so india and uk have signed an agreement for mutual recognition of educational degrees of students so bachelor masters and uh, doctoral level what does it mean so it means that now if you have done 12th from india you can apply for a bachelor's degree in uk okay so all those your cousins your junior ones who are in the 12th class now they have an opportunity apprise them of this opportunity that now they can directly apply in the bachelor courses of uk because now their qualification will be recognized similarly if a person has pursued uh, the suppose let's say a bachelor in english honors okay so if a person has pursued it from uk the person becomes eligible to be employed in india as well because the degree is now recognized so that is the basic idea behind this uh, agreement so but do remember this point that profession like medicine pharmacy engineering and architecture they are kept out of the the purview of this mo so if you have pursued medicine there you would not be eligible to perform the surgery or whatever uh, medicinal medicinal responsibilities are there in it okay for that you must need a indigenous degree okay or qualification or training whatever it is so these courses as of now are out of this mo another thing is to also sign to recognize the maritime education qualification okay for the maritime people for the seafarers the training education all of them are done differently so now uk and india are going to mutually recognize the training given to the people by each side okay a framework agreement on health and work force force for the society uh it includes cooperation on nursing and allied health professionals training of the healthcare professionals and measures to bridge the skill gap so easy to understand now remember that these agreements have been signed under uk and it has to pay arch okay this is important when when will the nancy grace roman space telescope mission be launched by nasa so here guys 2026 is the right 
Okay, so NASA has recently partnered with SpaceX in, and basically they have signed a contract to provide the launch services for this Nancy Grace Roman Telescope. Now, what kind of launch services? Basically, launch services like launch will be, entire procedure of the launch will be taken care of by SpaceX. That is the basic idea. Now, this Nancy Grace Roman Space Tel uh, Telescope, it was earlier known as Wild Field Infrared Survey Telescope, no need to remember. If you remember this thing, W first, that is also fine. Okay, in my opinion, nobody is going to ask you this thing, the whole form of this W first, but yes. Yes, a question can be framed that which of the following telescope was also known as this W first. Okay? Uh, uh, this was the prior name of which telescope. So in this manner, you can expect a question out of this. So remember that Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, telescope was earlier known as this. Okay? And it is the next generation observatory like the James Webb Telescope. It is also again a telescope that NASA is planning to launch in the space. Now it will be launched from the launch complex 39A of NASA's Kennedy Space Center. Sometimes space centers are also asked, however, this is a very famous space center. It remains in the news on and off, therefore, uh, many of the people know about it. But since it is in the news, you need to know Kennedy Space Center is in news in Florida. Okay, Florida we are. Now this Roman Space Telescope project is managed by NASA's Goddard. Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. This is important. Okay. okay, now we are at a very important question. Do listen to me carefully. What is the population of elderly people as per census 2011? So, guys, here 104 million is the right. So, why are we discussing about the population of elderly uh, suddenly? The reason is that Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation has released Youth in India 2022 report. Now, a very crucial point of this report is that the population of youth in India is going to decrease as the years, years come ahead in the future. And the population of the elderly people is going to increase. So, if the population of youth goes down, the and the population of elderly increases then what would be the possible impact uh, which you can think of right now firstly the overall productivity the contribution to gdp would go down secondly the social security burden would increase in india and at the same time you also need to know that india is not a rich country india is a poor country and at the same time uh, the social security burden on a poor country will lead to a fiasco okay so and also there is one more implication of this which i can think of right now is that if you have seen the skill gap as of now the youth of india is not that much skilled as required by the industry so we are not getting uh, the uh, capable jobs the good quality jobs and if this continues and so when we will become elderly, our job productivity will, will not be equivalent to that, will not be that sufficient and at the same time we will not be earning that much. So again, the burden of the social security schemes will increase. So right now the focus on the skills should be made so that the youth will be trained. And you all know that even in the youth, we are not having sufficient skills. So how can we expect our elders to have that much skill in the IT sector or in different kind of e, uh, we can say online segments because now everything is becoming more and more digitized. So if the job productivity goes down, if the job uh, jobs are going down, then obviously the burden on the social security scheme will increase and ultimately the burden on the exchequer will increase. So that is the possible implication that I can now think of now think of more implications, okay, so that uh, you can create an answer in the descriptive paper because this is a recent report, you can expect a question in the phase two. So from that perspective, create uh, the pointers, okay. Now let's have a look at the trends, trends in youth population. So obviously in 1991, the population was this and it increased to this 
333.4 million in 2011, then 371.4 million in 2021, then increases, uh, sorry, decreases to 345.5 million by 2036. So it is now the proportion of the percentage of youth in comparison to the total population 26.6 percent in 1991 then 27.9 percent in 2016 now it is going to decrease to 22.7 percent in 2036 guys these numbers are important you can directly cite them in any of your descriptive answers if you uh, encounter any answer on your silver economy i hope you are acquainted with the concept of silver economy it is basically the economy driven by and also for the elderly people so uh, remember these numbers now we have trends in elderly population the old people as for the 2011 census 1.4 million old people were there by 2036 we can have 225 million old people 2061 425 million old people then proportion of elderly to the total population 6.8 percent in 1991 then 9.2 percent in 2016 14.9 percent in 2036 a huge per increment in their percentage however the overall uh, if you compare this percentage from the overall population then it would uh, appear to be less but if you see the number of people who are old who are dependent on the state then it is guys huge especially from the state's perspective because it has to cater to their demands it has to cater to their healthcare system and in order to improve or make the system robust right now what we need to do we need to improve the skill gap so that the people like us when we will become old we have sufficient jobs we have adequate or productive jobs in our hand secondly healthcare system needs to be improved education access needs to be in, uh, improved so these are some of the ways which i can think of to robust to make the system robust for the elderly people as well as for the future india now you need to think more of this now if we look at the state wise data so we have Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Himachal Pradesh which will see a rise in the elderly population. There is Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. These states will have 52% of the total country's youth by 2036. So these states uh, are important. Now do remember the states. Okay. This is important. So yeah, guys, this video ends. I hope that you have liked the video. If you have liked it, then share it among your friends. Thank you so much guys for watching the video.